Is it possible that something as simple as a different style of neck bushing can shrink your groups? That is what we're exploring in today's video. Previously we took a look at these short action customs bushings and saw that overall we had better results with runout. But does that translate on target? Today we're going to test three different configurations with a new load combination and see what has the best results overall for group size and velocity statistics. Let's get started. First, my standard disclaimer. If you're happy with the results, don't think I'm telling you to change. I also am not promising that my results will be your results. Though I have gotten several responses to my first video where they were impressed with their results. So what are we really talking about here? All die bushings are the same, right? Well, that's what I used to think. Well, when I was poking around on Short Action Customs website when I was buying my comparator set, I saw that they offered die bushings. And on their website, it claimed that our neck resizing bushings have minimized neck runouts in cartridge brass in nearly every die we've used them in. After attempting to eliminate and reduce neck runout in our size brass using various commercially available neck bushings, we realize that every neck bushing has the same flaw, a straight undersized hole when compared to the brass. I don't want to speak for you, but if I had one thing that I absolutely didn't like about my Reading S bushing dies is the amount of runout I get. For me, at best, it's inconsistent. For the brass we sized for today's test, with our S bushing die with a Redding bushing size at 288, our runout ranged all the way from 1,000th of an inch of total indicator runout all the way to our worst example was a little over 3,000th of an inch of total indicator runout. I'm not saying this is horrible, but this has been my experience across the board, regardless of manufacture, at least until now. Some people will want to argue if this even matters. Maybe it doesn't. But all things being equal, I would always choose to have less runout in my brass. Well, when I picked up one of these bushings, I frankly thought that I would be making a video about funny things that manufacturers claim. But I did want to give them their fair shake. And if you saw the last video, these bushings really perform. Out of 11 sized rounds, these are basically perfect. Way less than 1,000 inch of total indicator runout. And in fact, the worst example I can find gave me just under 1,000th of an inch of total indicator runout across the board. But we really want to know how it performs on target. And that is the heart of today's test. For today's test, this is not a load that I have yet tuned to perform in my rifle. This is a load that I just started working with, and I plan to cover in great detail in future videos. This is the 142 grain Sierra Match King with Hodgkin H4350. I have done quite a bit of work with the Hornady 140 grain ELDM, so I simply stole the charge weight that I use with it for today's test. So our charge weight would be 41.3 grains of H4350. According to Sierra's data, this is well under max, and we shouldn't see any pressure signs from today's testing. For the primer, we're using the CCI 41. It's worked very well for me in the past. The brass is nothing less than our annealed Lapua 6.5 Creedmoor small rifle primer brass that has been fired five times previously. We've done no coal tuning to this load at all, so we're picking a cartridge overall length across the board of 2.800 inches. And for our test, we're sizing in three different methods. The first has been my standard process here on the channel. A Forrester full length die with the expander ball removed and the internal neck dimension is set with an expander mandrel that's two thousandths under projectile diameter. The projectile diameter in this case is 264, so the mandrel we'll be using is a 262. The second configuration we'll be testing is the Redding S die with a Redding 288 titanium nitride coated bushing. It is set to the same shoulder bump as a full length die of exactly two thousandths. For the third group we're going to be testing, we're going to be swapping out that 288 Redding bushing for the Short Action Customs 287 bushing. Everything else is exactly the same as Configuration 2. In case you missed the last video, you might wonder why I'm using a different Redding bushing size versus Short Action Customs. The short version of this is that the brass dimension out of the die is almost exactly the same using these two different bushing sizes. Even though we've checked both of them with a pin gauge, they measure exactly the same as they are labeled. This will be more clear, however, when we look at the seating force charts that I'm going to provide in just a second. One of the clear differences between these bushings is how the brass enters the case. The short action customs bushing sits just a little bit lower on the brass, and we're going to see this in the seating force charts. Which, let's start with these. If you're not familiar with these, these are generated by my amp press. And these charts represent the seating force in pounds on the vertical axis over the distance traveled on the horizontal. Auto scaling between these charts will make them a little harder to compare, but the data is there. Looking at the chart for our full length die, we can see our projectiles start entering the case somewhere around 40 pounds. As soon as that process starts, the force immediately drops and then continues on up to anywhere between a peak force of 91 to 122 pounds. 
Keeping in mind the bushings aren't going to resize the entire bit of the case, they're going to leave a little bit unsized, which will be easily shown in our next graph. This is the graph for our standard Redding 288 bushing. On this graph, we can see that the seating process starts somewhere around 20 pounds, climbs up almost instantaneously to 40, drops a little bit, and then continues on its way pretty consistently to a peak force somewhere between 73.7 pounds all the way to 97.5 pounds. We can see towards the end of the seating process that the force starts to decrease. This is because the projectile is entering an area of the brass that was not sized by our bushing, that we'll be able to see clearly in our next chart as well. The next chart is from our Short Action Customs 287 bushing. We can see that it has almost an identical seating force start right around that 20 pound mark, but it never even has that peak go above 40. It has a smoother transition into the seating process. And we can see that our peak seating force varied between 59.3 pounds all the way to 82.9 pounds. Compared to our Redding 288 bushing, we can see that even less of the neck was sized in this process because of the way the brass enters the bushing. When we fired the cases today, I was also monitoring the pressure, and I'll put the pressure curves on your screen. Keeping in mind these aren't corrected, they probably should be somewhere in the ballpark of 10,000 PSI higher. Our 10 rounds of the 288 bushing had an average pressure of 48,218 PSI. Our short action customs had a slightly higher overall average. The average of those rounds was 48,368. Our full length die was a 262 mandrel, almost identical to short action customs average, 48,375 was the average for those. One interesting point I thought that was on here, our Redding 28 bushing, the extreme spread from the lowest pressure to the highest pressure red was 4,900 PSI. The short action customs was down to 3,463. The full length die had an extreme spread in the pressure of 4,323. But what a lot of people really care about is the results on target. So for this particular load, my standard process, again, full length size, 262 mandrel, had an overall 10 shot group size of 0.8 MOA. Our average velocity was 2762 feet per second, standard deviation of 8.1 with an extreme spread of 31. Our Redding 288 bushing gave us an overall group size of 0.88 MOA. Our average velocity was 2764, basically identical, standard deviation of 8.9 with an extreme spread of 30 very, very similar to our standard load. Our Short Action Customs 287 bushing gave us an overall group size of 0.57 MOA. Our average velocity dropped just slightly to 2760 feet per second, but our standard deviation dropped to 5.6 with an extreme spread of 17. To be honest, I've been sitting on this data for a few weeks because when I posted my last video, you guys bought all the bushings before I could get any more for myself. I see now that there are other sizes back in stock and they've even added additional sizes. So I have some more bushings headed my way. Hopefully if you guys missed out last time, you'll be able to check and see if your size is now available. And again, there's more sizes available than there used to be. Personally, after my initial results, I'm excited to test these and other calibers. After seeing these results, if you wanna see exactly how important setting neck tension is in your reloads, check out this playlist here. If you'd like to support more crazy testing like this, please consider the supporting the channel here on Patreon. And I hope to see you come back next week. And until then, stay safe and small groups.